Prince Andrew is reportedly standing by his decision to do what turned out to be a widely criticized interview about his friendship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. The prince sat down for a rare interview with Emily Maitlis for the Newsnight program at our partners, the BBC. The prince denied allegations he had sex with a 17-year-old girl who says she was trafficked by Epstein, and he discussed his friendship with Epstein, who died in August in a jail in New York City. Do I regret the fact that, that, that he has quite obviously conducted himself in a manner unbecoming? Yes. Unbecoming? He was a sex offender? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being polite, in the sense that he was a sex offender. But no. Um, uh, was I right in, in, in having him as a friend um, at the time? And bearing in mind this was some years before he was accused of being um, a, a sex offender, um, uh, I, I don't think there was anything wrong then. The problem was the fact that once he had been convicted, you stayed with him. I stayed with him, and that's 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 the bit that that that, that um, as it were, I kick myself for on a daily basis because it was not something that was becoming of a member of the royal family. Emily Maitlis joins us now in her first U.S. interview since her interview with Prince Andrew, which aired Saturday. Emily, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Morning. My pleasure. Uh, in, the, in the headlines in the British press, this interview is being called a train wreck and a catastrophic error. Why do you think the prince agreed to do it? Well, I think, to be fair, that what we got from Prince Andrew was authenticity. And there are many figures that come onto the television or give interviews to the press who uh, tend to be PR'd to distraction. Everything is very carefully worded, and there is no wriggle room with anything they say to ask anything else. And this was a different kind of interview. Uh, we saw an authentic side to the Duke of York. There were words that I'm guessing uh, he might want to have rephrased. You heard some of them in the clip that you just played. Uh, but this was essentially a man who was engaging with every single question that we put to him from Newsnight. And my sense of why he did it was because the questions surrounding his friendship and indeed his own conduct, sexual conduct, had intensified following the death of Epstein in August. The prince's PR advisor reportedly quit over his decision to do this. And you say Prince Andrew sought approval from the Queen. Do we know whether the Queen was actually on board with this? What we do know is that he sought approval from higher up, shall we say. Now, he didn't say to me directly that that was the Queen, but it's hard to think of who else is higher up whose approval he would need. What I can tell you is that we filmed the interview in the quarters of Buckingham Palace that are very much the Queen's own residence, her entrance, the South Drawing Room, the Marble Hall, uh, where they do the investitures. If he hadn't had the approval of the palace, I'm imagining it would have been done in a sort of boardroom of a London hotel somewhere. Virginia Roberts Jufre has accused the prince of having sex with her three times while she was underage. Um, he denies ever having... He denies... He says he doesn't recall ever meeting her. Let's listen to exactly what he said. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. None whatsoever. You don't remember meeting her? No. She says she met you in 2001. She dined with you. She danced with you. Mm -hmm. You bought her drinks. Mm -hmm. You were in Tramp nightclub in London. Mm -hmm. And she went on to have sex with you in a house in Belgravia belonging to Gerlaine Maxwell. Didn't happen. She was very specific about that night. Mm -hmm. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating <laughs> and that she went on to have bath, there's a, there's possibly... A, there's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat um, or I didn't sweat at the time. And that was... Oh, was she? Yes. I didn't sweat at the time because... I um, ha had suffered what I would describe as an overdose of adrenaline in the Falklands War when I was shot at, uh, and I simply... It, it, was, it, was, it was almost impossible for me to, to, to sweat. Emily, how is that explanation being received? 
Well, um, with a certain amount of interest, <laughs> perhaps incredulity in some yeah. quarters, I think we could say there was no shortage of detail in the prince's answers. I mean, I think that's what comes forward. We were hearing things for the very first time. I don't know of that medical condition. I haven't you know, I don't have a medical background, I haven't researched into it. But certainly from Prince Andrew's perspective, he was telling us things that he hoped would make sense of what we'd seen, of what we'd heard, of the allegations. Um, a, a lawyer for Epstein's victims uh, is calling for the prince to answer questions under oath uh, in the U.S. Do you think it's likely that he could get drawn into a criminal investigation? I did put to him, I asked him if he'd be willing um, to answer questions under oath, and he said he'd be willing to do what ed anyone else should do. He would take, I think his words were very serious, legal advice on it, and it wasn't something he'd avoid if he had to do it. All right, Emily Maitlis, thank you very much for being with us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you.